Hello, it's Maria here, and today we're going to be talking about Roberto Bernardi and hyperrealism. When photography was invented, artists felt like they had to compete with this new medium and tried to look for things that they could do that a photo camera couldn't. This led to an explosion of non-realistic styles, including Impressionism, Expressionism, Fauvism, Suprematism, Surrealism, Abstract Art, Conceptual Minimalism, and more. But some artists decided to take a different route and paint just like cameras shoot, but better. They would make images more crisp, more sharp, and more detailed. Because a camera can only focus on one thing at a time, these hyperrealistic artists decided to focus on everything. Hyperrealism is a style mostly appreciated in the United States. These artists work in various different genres, including portraits, landscapes, and also still lives. Today, we're going to be focusing on the artist Roberto Bernardi, who's famous for these hyperrealistic paintings of candies. For your project today, you should find a piece of candy wrapped in a clear plastic and put it on a black piece of paper or a black tabletop. It's a good idea to take a photograph in case the candy gets misplaced or something changes, like the lighting. This is supposed to be a pretty large painting of a very small object. It's recommended that you paint it about 10 to 15 times bigger than it actually is in reality. You're going to be focusing a lot on all the details. Because the background is black, it might be helpful to sketch out your composition with a white pencil. Just make sure not to press too hard. I also don't want my composition to be too boring, so I'm putting the candies at a slight angle, so it's not just straight up and down or sideways. When you're painting a really brightly colored object on a black background, one coat of paint won't be enough to cover up the black completely. You should prime the area with white or a very light color so that the colors on the candy can show up just as bright as they are in real life. I'm only going to start on the shading and details after I put down this layer of a flat white. Even though they're really small, you still need to show that these candies are 3D objects. That means they're going to have light and shadow. You need to recognize where the light source is and also decide what the lightest and darkest parts of the candy will be by looking at it in front of you. One of the most important parts about this project is not painting the candies too light. The lightest part of your painting overall is going to be the reflection in the plastic wrappers. So even if a candy is white, or I think of it as white, I'm going to paint it a slightly dimmer color so that the plastic reflections can really jump out. That's why I'm painting this peppermint more of a pinkish gray and making the shadows even darker. If you put a color that's not even that light on a dark black background, there'll be a huge contrast, so it'll make the color appear really light in comparison to the black. That's why you don't have to paint these candies purely white in order to make them look white. Since we're going for the hyper-realistic style here, Try to include as much detail in the pattern or shape of the candy as you can, including any printing imperfections with the pattern or any cracks and divots in the candy. If a candy is somewhat clear, it'll still have areas of light and shadow, but it might have a few bright shiny highlights as well. When it comes to painting the wrapper of the candy, it's going to be mostly clear with very, very bright white highlights. The brightest highlights should be painted with one brush stroke and should be elegant and confident. You don't want to keep painting the same place over and over again. You can practice doing individual brush strokes on another piece of paper. The plastic should be outlined with a very, very thin stroke of white and many of the highlights, especially where the plastic is more wrinkled, will also be very thin and very bright. The plastic is twisted at ends of the candy in order to keep it wrapped. Here, the plastic overlaps with itself a lot. You can create that effect by putting many bright highlights very close to each other. Notice how, because the candy isn't completely white itself, the white highlights of the plastic will show over it. This creates the effect that it's actually covered or wrapped in plastic. Don't be tempted to paint all of the plastic with a layer of white. It's going to be mostly clear. Only use white for the highlights or where plastic is really bunched up. The wrapper on my other piece of candy is very different. Instead of the plastic being twisted at the ends, 
It's contained in a sort of bag, so instead, the plastic just stretches over the candy. It still has a very thin white outline, but for the bright highlights, they're going to be a bit bigger, flatter, and rounder. At the place where the plastic wrapper is sealed, or the side that has the spiky end to it, the plastic is a lot thicker. I'm going to show that the plastic is very thick by not making it completely clear. Instead, I go over it with a very watery layer of white. However, I still don't want this part to be as bright as the reflective highlights. If your candies are on a reflective surface, like a table or a countertop, they're going to leave a slight reflection onto the ground. By adding this in your painting, you can really make it look realistic. Just make sure not to make it as bright as the candy itself, and be precise with it. After I add in these reflections, my painting is done. Now, it's your turn.